Hey everyone, welcome to the Torvis Podcast. My name is Ari, this is Jason, and this is Alex. And tonight's episode, we are going to be talking about the most famous barbarian of all time, in my opinion, Conan. Now, there are different barbarians out there, and uh, we're going to kind of go into the history of Conan. Last week, the three of us watched Conan the Barbarian, which is the best of the two Conans. Some would argue that Red Sonja is kind of in there, but Jason's going to actually talk about what happened with that, and uh, there's some rights things that uh, I believe happened. So we're going to talk about Conan tonight, and uh, barbarians in general. So when was the last time that you watched Conan? Before? Last week. <laughs> Besides that, though, I mean, prior to that. I don't know, a few months before. Okay. Yeah, how, about, how about you? I never actually had seen it all the way through. You guys have shown me a couple clips yeah. uh, for the weapons episode that we did, but mm -hmm. I've never seen the, uh, the original all the way through. Okay. So we're going to start with the history of Conan. We're going to talk about the author of Conan. And Jason is a big proponent of The Barbarian. I uh, have some comics and you've read some things. So just want to give people who know nothing about Conan the Barbarian, because a lot of people think it's just a movie and that's where yeah. it comes from. So kind of give them a little background. Yeah, uh, Robert E. Howard, one of the great Pulp Fiction writers. I know you guys, most of you listening, probably thinking of the movie Pulp Fiction, but Pulp Fiction was a type of uh, literature that a lot of people say is not literature from the earliest part of the century, which last century to so like 100 years ago kind of century. So they had these magazines. Uh, the main one was Weird, Weird Tales. Weird Tales, yeah. And they had these authors would go and they would write these these magazine articles these short stories lots of lots of different short stories and some of the best writers so robert e howard is the author of conan and so he wrote these different stories in the magazine and eventually later on i can't remember if it was like the 50s or 60s or something they got compiled into like a hardcover and it sort of started to spread a little bit a little bit more again, and then they did paperbacks. Was that the 70s? It could have been late 60s or early 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Marvel Comics got a hold of, got a hold of uh, it and did some really great comics. Uh, just amazing stuff. So in the 70s, and then you also have, I think, a, with Arnold being in the, Arnold Schwarzenegger being in the movie here, there's a parallel development of bodybuilding uh, with building up from, you know, again, six, 60s, 70s, it was kind of a big mm -hmm. thing. You know, there's some roots in the 50s. I'm not a, obviously not a bodybuilder expert. But <laughs> <laughs> it was people. a big, it was a big opening for them into yeah. the film and the mainstream media, right? Like it, it was a way for them to be able to pursue their passion and fund it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And so it's, it's interesting because you'll see that the way that the Marvel comics did it, did the Conan the Barbarian and the way that the movie ended up being with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger in this. If you look at the at the earlier paperback uh, things and the, and, the, and the magazines and, and the pictures drawn of Conan, it's a very different kind of yeah. portrayal of totally. the male body. Um, for that, it's just an evolving way of what the barbarian, what the barbarian looked like. Didn't, and it just kind of reached a time where it sort of got popular. Didn't Marvel lose uh, Conan for a bit? Yeah, they, 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 Dark Horse was doing them for a while and they reprinted a whole ton of the Marvel stuff. Mm -hmm. Marvel's got it back and they're reprinting stuff now. So we can do a whole episode just on Marvel Conan. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but for the movie, I, I think that a lot of it was influenced by those comics. That's the reason I'm mentioning the comics comics now is because mm -hmm. the, that version and it's a, the movie is a butchered version of Conan. It's like, it's a mixed mash of a whole bunch of different things thrown together but it stands on its own. It's just like a, it's like a remix of a, of a song that it's based on a thing, but it's still got its own flavor. But it, even within the comic world, it inspired so many spinoffs and sort of allowed this genre of big, burly, dumb guy hero. But not sort of, dumb. Well, but that's, not, that's yeah. where Conan yeah. gets a <laughs> bad rap for being dumb. He's not dumb. But but that's a stereotype for those big for the barbarians. barbarians. Yes, yeah, right. yeah. And it's not necessarily dumb because I think they might not be intelligent, but they're very wise. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big difference between intelligence and wisdom. So, and we had argued when we were watching the film. So, it's Conan the Barbarian. Mm -hmm. However, we were talking, he's a thief, right? And he's like, you're too. Remember, he was, you're too, too big, big to be a thief, thief yeah. right? Yeah. But Conan is more than just a thief. 
he yeah. is he's a fighter he's a thief he is a barbarian you know yeah it really screws up the dnd guys like well, which class is he it's like the problem with dnd you know, big huge dnd fan but the class system just doesn't do justice to a character that's as complex as conan it's not just a simple oh it's conan i'm a barbarian you know yeah. it's not if you build a barbarian class you're not going to be able to do everything that conan does it just yeah. doesn't yeah. doesn't work the character is more complex and complicated yeah he has a little gladiator yeah. phase in there is a bunch of different got stuff. a whole bunch of different things so yeah. you, so you actually have a the yeah I have the fifth latest. edition open right now yeah, exactly yeah, the, about the barbarian to the barbarian so what are we gonna do with that We're, well i was just it's got a really cool uh artwork of the uh barbarian here on the page very sort of norse uh influence which we can touch back later yeah but uh because there, there is a big debate among scholars as to whether or not the Vikings themselves were considered barbarians. And again, we can talk but about... Barbarian is a relative term. Right. And What is a barbarian about, then? Okay, okay. Here we go. Okay. Now we're getting okay. into it. Okay. So essentially, uh, barbarian, the term was an ancient Greek uh, term, and it was initially created as a way for the Greeks to describe people, including mm -hmm. their own people, mm -hmm. who didn't actually speak Greek. And the reason that it was barbarian is because they thought that the other languages that people were speaking sounded like bar, 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 and they, and they, and they made, they made fun of people. It was like kind of like dummy or uneducated person. You're not like us. Cause the Greeks were the pinnacle of society as from, at that time. From their point of view. Right. Well, I right. argue to but other still, people, like, they were, they were the bar. Exactly. So they sort of created that term and it was essentially, it went from being used as, oh, you can't speak Greek to sort of you're not Greek. And then later on, the Romans used the term to sort of define as a mass. It's like how Trump uses Antifa. This is like his scapegoat term to just define everything, everything <laughs> that is anti his agenda. Yeah. Romans used barbarian to describe the Mongols, the Vandals, the Goths, a, all those different little groups. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of when the Romans started using it as propaganda, meaning evil uncivilized primitive brutal savage all those terms that nowadays we start to see when somebody says something we don't typically hear the word barbarian so much anymore but what we do have in the english language right now is the term barbaric commonly used to describe people that are brutal and savage like it's never like oh that was barbaric that's not a good term ever in common usage but there's a thing between civilization and not civilization so uh robert e howard has an essay the Conan author has an essay on on barbarism and civilization, and that's one of the major themes going throughout the Conan stories. But if you want to go with the Romans, then you could say take like Tacitus's Germania, and you could look at how he looks at. There's some parts there where it's looking more at the nobility of the barbarians versus the civilized things too. So there's competing things. It's not just all. Well, and that's I, where I, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, but well, and, and that's where the scholars of thought, debate yeah. the Vikings fitting that term because while their culture and appearance may embody a lot of aspects, it was very civilized. They had a complex Big social structure. They had a lot of. They had surprising amount of uh, cleanliness and rights for women and children and other. Uh, people who may not have been considered important. Trust me, we'll be doing a Viking. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. None yet. But, but, but that's just sort of the debate is, and it's how people use the term. And, and again, that's where I go to, is it the traditional Greek origin where it simply means foreigner or mm -hmm. is it the term that the Romans used as more of a propaganda to and then grow the their terms empire, get changed too. Like right? you're mentioning some of the barbarian, the barbarian tribes, right? Like the Vandals. Yeah. Most people don't know that the Vandals are a tribe yeah, a, a group of people. They mm -hmm. just know, oh, it's vandalism. So yeah. all they get known for is vandalism. Right. Is why? Why is it not Ostrogothism? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, it's just a, it's one of those one of those things. And people are like, ooh, the Huns. Yeah, you know, it's like all these things. And the Mongols, like certain barbarian tribes, get yeah. get known for different different things. Well, right? and what's really interesting historically too is how badly the Romans talked about these people, but then how much they actually teamed up with them. So Attila the Hun, for example, teamed up with the Romans to defeat another uh, group of barbarians. And then he actually just, once he rose to power and he basically conquered this one group, uh -huh. assimilated it, and then said, screw you to Rome and started fighting them. And then the Romans teamed up with another group of barbarians to defeat Attila. So the Romans were using these people at their whim to yeah. grow their empire. Wow. So they're also, they're also absorbing yeah. them too. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. who is the barbarians? And the Romans have a 
very inclusive way of bringing other people's peoples and people's ideas and thoughts in together. And then you yeah. get to the point where the ro where you could argue that the Romans and the and the Western Christians were the barbarians. Well, there's but, there's a really good quote a from other, uh, from the Fordham University website, um, and it is they doubtlessly seek Roman humanity among the barbarians because they cannot bear the barbarian inhumanity among the Romans. Mm. So it was how the people themselves, like they, they were like, what are you talking about? These guys are the bad guys. And yet they're the ones that are giving us food when you're not able to, or whatever they do. Right. Yep. The, the actual civilians within the Roman empire, sometimes they were overlooked when Rome was, expanding or being taken over as they're fighting and going through things mm -hmm. the citizens themselves would be left behind and the barbarians which were just other tribal people would actually take them in provide them with food and shelter and care for these people so mm -hmm. it, it became sort of a contentious point as rome started to fall apart obviously they started to see the downside of this massive empire um, that really used that term to oppress anybody who wasn't Roman. So Jason would be talking when we're talking about civilization, things like that. So Robert E. Howard has one of my favorite quotes of all time. And it's, it's so applicable and it's so true. And uh, it's an ongoing joke uh, when I worked in the bouncing circles and, uh, and stuff like that. But the quote, whoops, the quote is from uh, Robert E. Howard is, civilized men are more discourteous than savages because they know they can be impolite without having their skulls split yeah. as a general thing and it's true right people get away with so many things because it's like well, what are you gonna do like the cut. law defends me like come at me yeah. and, uh, and you're gonna cut my head off exactly. because you're rude and it's like well in feudal japan or in during the bar you know this, yes that would have happened exactly <laughs> right? yeah. so um, I think we mind are, your manners or they'll, you know, someone will crush your skull. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I just love that for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Simpler time. Yeah. <laughs> Civilized camels just don't know how to behave. Yeah, yes. So let's get into actually Conan the Barbarian. Okay. Because it has a mixture of so many different things. And it's never specifically talked about. Like I didn't get that reference until we talked about it. And the Atlantean sword. Yes. Then, then Conan talks about you know uh, he'll be cast out of Valhalla, and it's like okay. And then now there's a Norris reference. And then you pointed out when they were coming in the beginning of the film, you know you've got you've got the set worshippers are riding in, and it's like Egyptian, but they all look like Mongols. Yeah. Right. It's, it's no, they don't all look like well, Mongols. well, not all. You're right. You're right. You're right. There's a Celtic guy that there's a Celtic up guy there too. With his, like, yes. Thing. So what's, what's really the cool about, about the Conan and the, the movie in particular is that they take that really broad term barbarian, they put it in a blender and they theme everybody with little specks of all those different cultures that were just uh, stereotyped as barbarian, uh, which is really cool in just the, the attire that everybody's wearing. Like mm -hmm. there's a guy with a mongoloid helmet, but then a very Viking looking chest leather piece and, yeah. and a Viking shield or something. And then, you know, an ax that is either Celtic or Viking, depending on- It was real mixed, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it was just nicely merged together yeah. to get this fantasy barbarian, which is why I kind of brought the D&D, &D because the, when most people say the word barbarian now, they think immediately to Conan comic style or D&D &D barbarian type character, uh, you know, and that's just, historically, I think that's partly to do with the way the Romans were labeling things, for yeah. sure. Like, so full circle. The, at the very beginning of the film, obviously, uh, Conan's village, it gets raided. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, Conan is talking to his father, who's talking about the riddle of steel. Which is, that's the essence of the, the whole, whole movie, the right? The whole movie is, yeah. is the riddle of steel. And uh, so a little trivia point, if you didn't know. If you look, uh, when the sword is being forged, Jason and I already knew this, and yeah. we were telling uh, Alex mm -hmm. about it, but... As it's being forged, you, you've seen it, but you haven't seen it. And then once you once you see it, you, can't you cannot see it. it. <laughs> um, so there are runes on the sword, Conan's uh, father's sword that he makes, and it just looks like runes, but actually it's upside down and it's it's English. So it, the inscription reads, "Suffer no guilt. He who wields this in the name of Crom." So if you flip it over, that's what it actually says. So very very cool. Um, and then, so again, uh, you have them raid Conan's village, mm -hmm. kill his mother. Yeah. And, and what are what are they raiding right in front for? of them? Steel. They, they don't give yeah. it. A, they don't say for sure. Like they said, they didn't know what it was for. This or that. Steel was one of the things they mentioned. But interestingly, that sword that that they take from the father, 
shows up later, right? That he yep. hangs on to it all these years, and and he had sought the secret of steel himself, the villain. And even though, as his, he said in his youth, that he had sought after the secret of steel, and so in that he had taken the sword. They had taken the sword there and kept it all these years. So showing how good Conan's father's sword was, that it didn't get replaced by a better secret of steel over over the years. That that's the best they found. But that was the problem: is that they just, for all those things, he was not a dungeoneer. So, so you got to go into dungeons if you want better swords. Right. So <laughs> I need to jump forward here. So remember, we we're talking. It's like when Conan found the Atlantean sword, his his sword that he uses, which is. I guess arguably older than his father's sword. Definitely. Yeah. And it, in the end, that sword ends up cutting his father's sword in half. Exactly. So I'm like, well, well, that's an older sword. So Jason made a good point. It's like, well, maybe the knowledge of actually how to forge really, really good weapons was lost. Totally. So just because you advance through the age doesn't mean you're getting more advanced. Well, ki they kidnap. They, well, kidnapping? Is it, I well, guess was a kid. Kidnapping. Yeah. He's a kid. So they're kidnapping. Putting the kid in yeah. kidnapping. <laughs> so they're taking right. all the kids, right? They, they march them through and, and they enslave them in the east and in the north. In the north, my bad, yes, because they go east. Of, yes. So they, in the north. And then so they basically chain Conan to the wheel of pain. <laughs> the best exercise workout machine ever. If you want a balanced body, this, this, is what you this one thing, like forget about any of these other things. Like, it 20 will, years you do and that. And you go in For, one, your one direction out, around a the circle, you're still going to be totally symmetrically balanced. It's going to, every <laughs> muscle group is going to be worked out. It's just amazing. It's not like the power lifter guys. No, you're, you're getting bodybuilder body. Out of so another, thing. another thing about the wheel of pain that we talked about when we were watching the movie and uh, the viewers, please comment on this. Let me know what your thoughts are. But we were wondering, why are they pushing this wheel? What's what, it doing? Like, are they milling some milling kind of grain? Flour? Is, is it like a drill that's <laughs> drilling, so or is it uh, grain some, salt is it turning I something? I have no idea, right? But they're that's they're true. all there, and they're just there to push this wheel around. Like, it seems like the craziest kind of torture device, maybe. Like, is that so many people's lives is just turning the wheel around? And I guess the, the cog in the machine, right? And not only that, but they take this group of kids there, <laughs> and they're all pushing it around. This one group shows up. And slowly, you're, it's a time lapse, and you see, you watch Conan Best grow training up. montage yeah, ever. You, you watch him grow up and get stronger as more and more kids die. But he just keeps getting bigger and bigger. He's and by the, the end, kids. he's pushing it by himself. And you're wondering, okay, so they just, they made this wheel, and then they put, like, 13 kids on it and had them push it for 20 years. And that's why they built this wheel? Like It was I built in what? the Highlands. There can only be one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's, and the hilarious thing is they actually took the Wheel of Pain and they introduced it to the oh, yeah. strongman competition, the world's strongest man. And they actually, a couple of years ago, and they had, they, it was an amazing thing. And it's the same thing. It's this huge thing that you have to push around. Yeah. And uh, I just, I just, I love it. So the Wheel of Pain is, is so good. And a little trivia note, if you look at Conan's um, little that brooch necklace, necklace yeah, yeah. it's essentially the Wheel of Pain. Yeah. And then when he's in fighting in the, he starts out with that. And then when he goes to fight in the, if you look up, becomes a pit fighter gladiator. Yeah. They have the, the, the wheel of pain. I guess the, it's like their the, clan the, symbol the, almost. The, right? it, it becomes it his symbol. symbol yeah. For yeah. His, until he discards it. Yeah. He gets, he gets pissed. Upset. Yes. <laughs> Rips it off, throws it and he curses Crom. And it, it kind of becomes a symbol that he uses to oppression, but then, but then also embodies Crom a little bit, his <laughs> God. And then he, which we'll get into. Yeah. So, so he gets taken, he grows up, he's massive. He's the only guy left. Um, uh, another trivia point. So uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger had a good friend of Ben, a uh, good friend of his, which was Sven Olthorsen, uh, who's also a bodybuilder, who played the role of Thorgrim, uh, the the barbarian God, guy with a hammer. huge hammer. And Which, then yeah. there was Ben Davidson, who was uh, '80s metal band was think. Rexor. Yeah. Oh yeah. Rex. So those huge. are the huge. This guy's massive. So, he dwarfs Arnold. So we looked it up because we we're like. Wow, Rexford really looks a lot bigger than than Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is is six two. He's probably like two sixty in that film. I'm like this dude's really big. So I looked it up, and he's six eight. So Ben Davidson's really big. So they needed obviously an actor that's going to be huge. Anyway, we'll get to those guys in a minute. So Conan grows up. He becomes a pit fighter. And one of the most famous lines: Conan, what is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear the lamentation of their women. That is good. That is good. That is a classic and line. For trivia, try that in front of your Siri. Ask Siri what is best in life. 
I did that once. He said, hey Siri, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven what? before you, and to hear the lamentation of their women. Wow. There you go. So that's impressive. Yeah. I stumbled across that by accident. Very cool. <clears throat> so the funny thing, uh, so Siri has these like really weird things that, uh, that have been embedded. Yes. By, uh, by the program. By the program. Yeah. So After Conan becomes uh, an awesome gladiator, he kills everyone and that type of thing. Eventually, one night, he is set free. Little trivia point. He's that set when he's going through the wheat fields. Oh, wait, different. Different. Okay. Okay. He's set free by the redheaded kid. That was that strapped him to, to the, the wheel. wheel, yeah, yeah, and kind of grew up as his manager somehow, and was like the guy making all the money off him. Doing like wrestling, he's a stable yeah. of, 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 yeah. of people, yeah, yeah, because he was sitting on the wheel there. It was his point. wheel. This he invested. His dad was like, "Here's all this capital. What are you gonna do? Here's a bunch of lumber. It's like now I'm gonna build a wheel and make the ultimate gladiator." Yeah. I guess that's what it was. I don't know. But he gets he gets uh, he gets released, and he he runs into the wild because now he's free. Yeah, um, and I. I just thought of another trivia thing. We're going to go back. Remember you saying that Celtic, that Pictish guy, yeah. he jumps up there. That is also Conan's very good friend who actually died a couple of years ago. Um, Franco Colombo, who was also- He's jumbo large. He was, he's actually really short. Super, super, oh. super short. Yeah, he's like five, five, five. Mm. Uh, but he was another bodybuilder because Arnold put it in all of his bodybuilder friends into his movies. Because yeah. yeah. he's like, well, they're not going to get- jobs up this anyway. is where they're yeah, gonna get exactly right yeah so conan runs into it so we're watching that and then he ends up finding that tomb falling and, into well it. he ends up running away from the dogs from the dogs that yes. were which on which him. is kind of nice because in the attack on the village how does his dad die yes ripped apart by dogs. by dogs yeah and going back to just a little side thing here going back to one of our earlier episodes talking about great video games the greatest video game ever dominions um for pc play Ulm, which has a bit of steel as its main thing it. there. And you can also get war dogs if you get, I think it's version on Dominions 4. I think they started adding war dogs. If not, five, four, version four, this version five, they added, like that's yeah. they added war dogs. But the riddle of steel is what it's all about. So if you want to wow. play it, where the barbarians are exploring it and they become civilized and get the best armor and weapons. And anyway, Dominion. Wow. And, and, and sidebar. Okay. Uh, so they find the what would you call it? The crypt? I guess it's a crypt. Tomb, crypt, tomb. Okay. resting place. So he falls in there and he does his typical Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> so that may be the first so occurrence good. of. Yeah. yeah. So we all laughed because it was hilarious. But he falls in there uh, and then he essentially finds the Atlantean sword mm -hmm. on this massive giant, giant, it would be a giant. skeleton yeah. uh, with a really cool helmet on, but no other. I guess he died naked mostly and with his helmet on and a sword because he no he was just a skeleton and his flesh fell off right but like when you have clothes or armor he did on? he had armor on oh okay well he i just, thought he just had a helmet anyway he, people <laughs> die in yeah. their chairs yeah. without they wearing could, a, yeah, lot of, true. a lot of true. clothes yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> like whatever you judging this guy <laughs> but then right. the, but then you're also like he get, takes the sword and it's super rusty and this is another cool scene and i want to i love that I, scene i want to hear from a, like a blacksmith that i want even possible Dane, 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 yeah, tell Dane. us please i Always, every time I see that, I want to ask. It's myself. so rusted and like ancient looking, and all he does is he takes it and he smashes it on the ground, the sound. And, and the and it clang clang, and the the rust just crumbles off to reveal this beautifully polished piece of steel, like it was just this crust on the outside. Yeah. You could just unpackage, and boom, now you're you've got this incredible sword, <laughs> um, and it has an inscription on it too, doesn't it? It has, it has runes on it. I don't it know does. It I don't know what the inscri inscription says on that one, though. Yeah. Um, but if it was a giant, who took the riddle of steel from the gods? Right. The yeah. giants. Right. So in the, the darkness <laughs> of chaos, and he fell into a dark. So yeah, the, the thing. funny thing about the, those two swords, they were... So the trivia for this is the Conan's father sword and the Atlantean sword were both real swords made by blacksmiths, and they were the largest swords ever made uh to be wielded uh, uh, essentially ever so yeah. this is like, how much they weigh like people use actual normal swords that you can actually use in battle they're they're two and a half super, pounds. they're super light to what people think yeah. of from fantasy so swords most fantasy swords day. are complete bullshit, bullshit about how heavy that you could not wield it well but you could argue that they were inspired like cloud sword is probably the most famously ridiculously oversized sword i don't know if you guys know the final fantasy cloud sword 
it's you know it's it's got a little it's got a little <laughs> tiny like why there's three of us here. and then it's massive this huge uh, my generation of people will know this um but yeah. uh, it's this massive ridiculously huge sword and then it kind of spawned this whole anime series of ridiculously large yeah. swords being wielded by people who do not look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, very small people with spiky hair, and they just fling them around like it's not, yeah. not a problem at all. But I think this is what sort of inspired that concept of using a massive sword to destroy your enemies. But yet, in the Conan thing, they, they did it in a reasonable totally, way. Like totally, they're, yeah. they're, they're excessive swords. Are like It's like a muscle car, but a muscle sword. It's like beefed up a little bit, but it's still at a point where it's still usable. Yeah. Whereas the later ones, third edition, Pathfinder, fifth edition, mm -hmm. Art. Anyway, it's a whole other, whole other conversation. But. <laughs> so the, the swords itself. So Conan's dad sword, uh, when they actually made it, was six and a half pounds, which is really heavy. Yeah. Conan's sword. Yeah, you're laughing now, but you try to you try. Swing, swing something six and a half pounds around for well, a while. Well, also the length, too, matters, right? Like you could of course. A six and a half pound weight, you could smash somebody with that all day long. But the fact is, it's is that it's the length, the, length, the, like yeah. the leverage, science, yeah. all that stuff makes it a lot heavier. So Conan's, Conan's was almost nine pounds. So the, they say the average sword back in the day was like two and a half pounds. Right. So this thing is huge. And so you see Conan, you see Arnold doing the, like the thing, and that's impressive. Like yeah. he's moving around a yeah. very large yeah. uh, weapon, like a normal shield. So I have a, obviously my Viking shield on there, which is double the weight of a normal sword, uh, would be 11 pounds, right? Right. That's 20 pounds on the wall. So think about all this weight you're, you're going around. Anyway, uh, great looking sword. Um, and the reason that it's, I guess, it would be, it's a two-handed sword, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it, it's a one-headed sword for the giant because that giant was actually quite big. Yeah. Um, and then Conan comes out of the tomb, cuts, you know, that typical, like, getting rid of the chain off his leg, yeah. right? And That's then a dicey like, swing. You gotta have a lot of accuracy with that. Yeah. So, great scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in well, that film. And another cool thing, too, is when he takes the sword initially, the skeleton kind of moves a little bit as if it was, I thought, when the first Alive. time I saw it, I thought, you know, you're thinking like classic Skyrim or D and D, where you take a sword from somebody, and then the guy's like, "Actually, that's mine." Yeah, and then he gets up yeah. and comes for you, like, and he kind of turns, and then he just falls apart. So Which as the nice. crew, I was like, yeah. I was a little bit like, and then I was like, "Oh, that was fun." Because yeah, as D and D people, are like, no, it's an undead. Don't, yeah. don't yeah. go to. But speaking about really good scenes, we skipped over when, when the sword of his father was taken. Yes. What was the first thing it was used for after the death of the father? To kill his mother's mother, head. and that is Chopper that is. I mean, it's a it's a horrible scene in the, in the fact of that she died that way. But artistically, it's a brilliant scene. It's really got that comic book framing. Yes, of yeah. the cinematography there, With just the way the that her head's cut off and he's falling, turns yeah. his eyes around and swings, and her head and the hands holding. I mean. You're right. That's really comic book. You're right. That's yeah. really good. It's been like there's later Graphic movies. Novel, there's later yeah. movies that do those kinds of little scenes there where it's like a snapshot of. There's probably some technical term for it, but yeah, it was really good. And James Earl Jones, who plays Tulsa Doom, obviously the main character and a great, great villain. Like, Somehow he does good villains. I don't know. Pretty yeah. There's maybe I, a few that are that are. What else? Well what else did he play? I don't know. He's got a good voice. So he's got a good voice. Oh, Darth Vader maybe. Um. So this is not the snake you're looking for. So after he becomes free, he's one, I love it. The next scene, right? He's end up like, he's kind of, he doesn't have anything. The next thing he's got, he's got like fur on him. And we're like, oh, he must've killed the dog. Yeah, he comes out and, and used like the fur, right? Because now he has like fur armor, yeah. but no animals were hurt. In this movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then he ends up obviously finding the witch and having sex with the witch. Yeah. Uh, Mike Bramwell, by the way, he, he, he's like, like, what's your favorite scene? He's like, I like when he threw the witch into the fire. That's <laughs> she, she asked if he wanted to come in and warm himself by, by her, her fire. fire. Yeah. And he said, no, I would like you to warm yourself by your fire. So it was very hospitality. And it was weird because she had like a, she would, uh, I can't exactly I remember, you'll have to correct me, but wasn't it something like he wanted to find the symbol of the two snakes mm. yes and she said there's a price you have to like sleep like sleep with me and that's the price yeah yeah and Isn't then in always? the middle of it she yeah. becomes like this vampirous <laughs> demon witch type thing that starts like kind of clawing she, into i him. think she's a hag like, i think yeah. that's like the best way to describe it dean d wise yeah, like, yeah dean like hag vampire some kind of yeah. hag hag yeah, yeah. kind of goes because uh, they've got that 
ancient wisdom And they're kind of rolling stuff. around, and Arnold's kind of doing his ah, ah, ah <laughs> type noises, and I then he just it. chucks her into the fire, and she, and then she flies off as this flaming demon spirit type thing. Yeah. It was, it's quite the scene, and then you're like, <laughs> that was all just so he could get his next little clue for where he's supposed to go next. It was very, like, D&D. Yeah, you get, that your, way. you get like, your encounters, right? Yeah. You fall into the dungeon, you've got the thing. It's going to be an undead. Ha-ha, no, it's not. Yeah. Okay, you got your magic item now? Okay. You're there. Now, but the, the symbol of the two snakes. The two snakes, yes. Um, the sun. An the interesting moon. thing, yeah. So you talk about, I can't remember if it's the, the sun or the moon or the black sun rising or some kind of thing where there, if you see the symbol, it's got the, you can put up the graphic of, mm-hmm. the, of the one where it's got the two snakes and then there's the, there's the sphere, sphere underneath it where it's like the sun or the moon, whatever there but when they ride into the village they've got the two snakes and there's flames burning mm. burning underneath it you know it could almost be like the eye of sauron right you know below there so i don't know offhand what that is but someone else there okay you idiot how do you not know could it just be a variation on the symbol could be a variation but what do they mean with different things too what what i think is that as you see the longer the cult goes on just like any other uh religion or cult or faction there's small changes. There may be changes, but there it, may right? be factions like, within it. There may be different things. <laughs> totally. Even even Rexstar in the beginning thing there, he has on his armor, he has red snake right. intertwined on on his front there. So and they've got the things that's the shield on Pulse of Doom's horse. Mm-hmm. Like there's the, the snake things are already built in. And so I'm just curious about what that means about <laughs> the different things. Little side thing. I get hung up on this thing too. So after he leaves uh, the hags thing, he wanders in and he finds a thief who's chained up. And it is Subutai. 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 Yeah. Uh, played by Gary Lopez, <laughs> believe it or not. So Gary Lopez, great character. And they really did well to him. So uh, basically, and the, one of the best lines in it, Conan goes, who are you? And he's like, I'm Subutai. I'm a thief, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, well, what are you doing here? And he's like, Food for dogs, right? Because he's chained up, right? Yeah. It's just, it was like the little, the levity was really good. So yes. anyway, he ends up freeing him. And dogs they, chained now they But he now frees him because what does he want? He wants to be able to die on this he, deep fighting, right? Yes, he which asks, can he really says, appeal can I have to. have some food so I don't die from hunger so that I can, I can fight the dog. Die, right, so, yeah. so then you get into right? that whole die fighting thing. So, I mean, I know Sumerians are not the same as, as Norse and stuff, but you get the whole thing about the straw death. Yeah. And, the, and the dying fighting kind of thing. And, and so that can kind of appeal to, to the barbarians. Yeah, the, war, the, the warrior, right? Like, and even the Vikings, the, the samurai, like a, it's a, an honorable death, yeah. right? Like you, yeah. don't, you don't run away. It's not about living to fight another day. It's about receiving yeah. glory and death. Greek, Greek, All Greek, kinds Greek, of different uh, cultures, uh, warriors have sought that out so i think that's sort of what initially bonded these two warriors even though one was this <laughs> massive guy that was smashing things and the other one was a thief like it was also a refreshing take on a thief being a little bit more of a warrior than just a yes he got right Huge. like he's, he's a great character for that yeah mm-hmm. and that's what that's what i really liked about the film because again it crossed it was like a multi-class type of thing yeah it, it was but it's, nice it's smashing a whole bunch of stories together because there's one of the famous clan stories is the, the tower of the elephant and that's where Conan gets, this is a gets comic? involved. It, it's 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 one of the actual old oh, stories. The, they got the, the, the Marvel fiction. comics took the original right. the original Pulp Fiction things, comicized them, and then put in filler things in between. Roy Thomas, one of the fucking best people, one of my great heroes ever, the Marvel genius behind the bringing popularizing Conan. Brought, I don't think the movie would have been made without him. Like, what, what did he do? Sorry, Mar- I don't know. Roy Thomas, he, he worked for Marvel. He basically brought the Conan to the comics. Was he like put uh, the things together? I don't know. Exactly. chief or something? Or what was he? Was he a writer? Do you know? I don't know exactly what, what the, I can't remember what okay. his actual roles, but there's like Stan Lee, but he, he was the guy that brought together the Conan awesome. stuff for Stan cool. Lee and did that. But I don't think the things would be there. So what was I saying? He popularized it. Popularized it. There was some point hidden there a lot. We'll come back later. <laughs> so anyway, so Subutai and Conan are obviously together. Now there's two. They go into, they find civilization. Um, um, they end up, this is the first time that Conan's been in civilization. And I love that line in there where he's like, does it always smell like this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like um, they're, they're going to their first big city. And yeah. you can tell this man is kind of disgusted by it because he's, he's been not living in the woods and yeah. quiet villages. And it's very, you know, uh, in tune with nature and, sort of peaceful and not dingy and dirty and smells like 
feces probably. Yeah, and so there's that line. So they end up eating uh, basically the, the, oh, the street stygian, meat. The yeah. stygian, the yeah. street meat. He's like, you don't know how long it's been there, right? But anyway, so they get they get super high uh, off the stuff. Black Lotus. Black, Black Lotus. Lotus. Stygian. Yes. The best. Yes. Right. <laughs> So they get super high and they're stumbling around. And so again, one of the classic scenes in there is when Arnold ends up bumping into a camel and then he turns around and then he punches the camel. Wow. And, and we watched it a couple of times and we were like, holy shit, I, I think he actually connected with the camel's head. Yeah. You see the camel's head go whack and yeah, move. camel. Right, and I'm like, can you actually punch a camel? Like, are you allowed to do that? I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know what happened. Like, yeah, yeah. so good though. So ends up going down, fantastic. So here's the hilarious thing about that. So this is where we kind of, Jason and Alex and I were just like, okay, Conan, you're smart, but you're really stupid. This snake cult, right? They've already talked about all these like the towers of set, and like Conan has not clued in. He, does, he doesn't even notify. This, this is what he's looking for. This is that. Tulsa Doom's thing. He hasn't even figured it out. And it only until they actually get to the tower to do their thieving they that you know it, it only happens actually at the end like when he's inside but he, he sees this random trinket on the wall that's exactly the same symbol that he's like wait, wait a minute yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then clues in but anyway they 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 find um valeria valeria they run into her so now there's three yeah so you got the three thieves but first they actually they they meet her and she's a competitor because she's there to steal it as well and you're not really sure whether to trust her or not. It's a, she doesn't it's, look like a guard, though. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, <laughs> she does not. But uh, but it's just, it's a it's a cool dynamic that the the three of them share, sort of like a new party member in your campaign. How yeah. You kind of how do you how do you introduce them? that new character? So yeah, yeah, this did a lot for D and D. Again, the movie changes a lot. Valeria and the Red Brother. There's a whole different kind of Valeria if you get into the other things. But it's still, even though they change it, some of the that Howard Pierce are like, oh my God, what a what a butchery of the things to be able to make this movie. It's just a remix. It's another. It's another version of Valeria. It doesn't mean that she's she's it was pretty good though. She's interesting yeah. in her own way. It just don't and while, doesn't take away from the other character. And while she's a thief, she would definitely be considered like a Valkyrie. And there's later scenes that definitely allude to that. But she's like a shield maiden. She's uh well she's a warrior thief. I mean that's yeah. that's what she is. Yeah. And that like Subutai is basically a thief yeah. archer, right? Yeah. And like, like even though they're thieves in this barber thing, they want to die fighting and stuff. Like yeah. what do you want to do? Live yeah. forever? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well now they they, <laughs> they get a bunch of gems and riches. Yes. And they got their big score and now they're living as mm. any rich thief does, I imagine. Drunk. Just, yeah they just but still even before that out. it's still really cool. Because just going into the into the temple there to take it, like you get to see the cultists there doing their thing, and they're and then the one girl falls down the. They sacrifice her, yeah, down, yeah. And she's like, she's willing to be sacrificed, and she's totally calm with that, and she jumps off the drink the Kool Aid, jumps off the thing, yeah, to, <laughs> yeah, to do her thing. But then she lands down there, and then she freaks the fuck out <laughs> because the snake is the dead. snake is dead. <laughs> yeah. So she's totally willing to jump down all this this way and not really get hurt that bad and sacrifice herself to the snake but if the snakes hurt look out there's a kind of really cool cult seeing them around yeah. there and you get to see you get to see the warrior guys they're not just again it's just they're not these are multi-class dual class people yes it's for you people uh -huh. who care about humans and stuff um before your time um that i get off on these tangents. okay <laughs> so the, the rex store is not just big badass metal band warrior guy right He's also a priest. He's a high priest, right? right. And so he's right. in there doing that. So you get to see these interesting little bits that are in there that they didn't necessarily have to have to add in. And after they successfully raid the the t tower, they're sitting in the tavern, typical D and D scene. They're all drunk, right? And Valera, and then you have Conan, right? Oh, and, oh, the, and he's done. wasted, yeah. and and she's Just shaking like, him, and then he fucking pushes him off the chair. And anyway, so they get captured by um the, the king. king yeah mm -hmm. and the king brings him forth and basically goes to this whole thing saying you ended up doing something that no one else could do my daughter has been taken by false doom i want you to come i want you to work for me because the king's old yeah, yeah. And he's like this snake cult has been a pain in my butt yeah. i'm not you know they're like they're so now they're higher people the, yeah, yeah. There's, so now they're mercenaries and it's so so instead of just, just meeting in a tavern <laughs> They take you from a tavern to get your mission. You and, and you think, yeah. and you think you're screwed. You think you're going to jail. Uh oh, we're busted. And then 
flip at 180. Now the king has actually sent you on a quest yeah. to defeat the cult. You know, I got to say, like, now that I think about it, I mean, it's the perfect Dungeons and Dragons module. This whole movie mm-hmm. yeah. is to the T, classic, it's fantastic. Great Dungeon Master just setting Ama- it up one thing to, to another. And yeah. like, if you had never watched Conan, like, you know, your players had never watched it, run that campaign. It, it would be totally. so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. You know, so Max von Sydow, who plays the king, a uh, very famous actor. Uh, however, he also was the um, brewmaster in Strange Brew for all you Canadians out there with Bob and Doug McKenzie. Great movie, eh? Yeah. Fantastic. Another one. In Game of Thrones as well. He as was a, in Game yes. of Harley Preacher guy that ends up getting killed I don't know, pretty early. Pretty early. early season, like everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, and if you're not a Canadian, watch Strange Brew and you'll understand Canadians. So the the great so Con, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger said that the movie of Conan was hit like he said God's gift to his career. He said totally. this is the thing that was it my his career. first movie or just the first movie that made him big. The first one that made him big because he had Hercules. He had the Hercules one in New York, which was like they dubbed his voice because they was like they can't. Yeah, this was kind of the first one where they let him express his role oh, completely yes. instead of just be like a stunt double because he was large. Yes, it it was. In the same way that The Rock sort of started off because he was just this big dude to play a role as this big burly guy, mm-hmm. he then became this actor that has this incredible career and is now, uh, you know, not only just an actor, but a philanthropist and a businessman yeah. and involved so much in the world simply because he started in like WWF and was this massive yeah. dude that fake threw people around, right? So it, it let you Broke sort of, old. yeah, and, and yeah. he, it, wouldn't have been governor without yeah. something like this, right? Like it made him. The Rock, ironically, is having delusions of political ambitions, like, right. like Arnold with the thing. But totally, we'll and get to that later. Yeah, or not. Um, so the the funny thing is, so Arnold Schwarzenegger ended up saying that James Earl Jones, who plays Thalsa Doom, ended up helping him with his acting, as did Max Max von Sydow. And in in return, Arnold Schwarzenegger basically help them keep in shape that was the the the, the play there that's, that's a fair hilarious. trade yeah. yeah so you know trained by mr olympia yeah. pretty, pretty cool um apparently also the dagger um which max von Sido, that meant for me. yeah that one arnold schwarzenegger still has it he kept it as a memento awesome. really yeah very so, cool yeah he still the has two it. snakes with the yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> they left. They left on the quest. Yes, okay. the, the okay. king was there, and he was saying about how there comes a time when well, the jewels cease to sparkle, when well, the gold loses its luster, when well, the throne room becomes a prison, and all that is left is a father's love for his child. Cliches, it may be. So, cliches, but what do you do with the cliche? Right, that's 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 the things right and so they're not rescuing the princess to find her and marry her and she needs a man and all that kind of bullshit it's and just, she left of her own volition to go yeah. find this big cult that's been captivating the minds of which is thousands a, of people in the which is an eternal land. thing there's people to this day parents that still have this problem yeah. to this day totally. so it speaks across the ages but so they end up going on the quest i mean initially Conan goes without them, without Subutai and Valeria, right? Because they don't want to go. And so he ends up going. Because mm-hmm. they, they get all those nice bowls full of, full of the gems and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and Valeria is like, well, we should just, you know, get up, we, we've talked about this. Maybe we should just get up and leave and retire and be rich and stuff. And, but no, Conan is driven by something else. He's not just a greedy barbarian. No, he's As, revenge. He's yeah. revenge. revenge. Which comes up later. So, and it, so Conan ends up going. He ends up trying to get close to Thulsa Doom. They suss him out. They end up capturing him. But it's also the good D&D thing. It's like, okay, how do you get into their camp, right? So, he, so he's a barbarian, <laughs> yeah. right? Yes. And so he's, he's going there to find out what's going on. And... And and first he, of all, he oh, runs into a very interesting oh, character. Well, first off, when he's walking through, it's like Woodstock. It's like just a bunch of <laughs> yes. hippies just like doing Fucking drugs and hanging and out. Like, yeah, it was like, and they're all just doing drugs and singing Kumbaya in these weird circles. Yeah. It's like super But before, like before he even gets to there, he meets an interesting character. The other priest? The, the priest, the, the shaman priest guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That he says, oh, there's, yeah. are these priest robes? That's what he does. Yeah, yeah. Are these priests? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was talking about the shaman guy. Yeah. 
Oh, Mako. Because he, he's, oh, he, he's there, right? right? right and he, he runs right. into him there in yeah. the little, which is kind of interesting. He's got the hut on the stilts. The warlock guy, which, yeah. If you, if you see someone that lives in a hut on stilts, you know they've got magical power. And you totally. don't have to be Russian to think that. So anyway, runs into him. And he's going to threaten the most, de- summon a demon more fierce than all in hell. Yes. Yeah. And so how do, you, how do you make friends with someone like that? Right. Yeah. So yeah, he was. We called. What do we? Th- we. He was like a Wujin or a warlock yeah. or like we. There's different things that we called him. Yeah, like a warlock because he like whatever. uses like demonic powers. He's not super magical himself, so, but he draws spirit magic into from the, the spirit, spirit world. world. Yeah. So here's a D and D thing. This is we argued about this. We're like, okay, eventually, spoiler alert, Conan dies and they bring him back. But we're like, or what? Does he? What level is? is the the shaman yeah right is he like a super high level or is he just a lucky guy and then and then jason's like well is he raising dead is it heal like what spell did he use we'll talk about that in a second but keep that in mind but they're still they're still recruiting the party and it's like how do you how do you get the band together? that was like the fourth it's like right hour so it's like, yeah, so yeah you gotta yeah, meet exactly. all these different people here and yeah. so then he gets in the then with humor he just laughs at his thing yeah well that and then they laugh together and it's it's a great little bonding thing and then yeah he's got him on his side and then from there then he goes off to to the call the harry krishna hippie guys with yeah stuff. And right then, okay and then the priest wrote sorry i just wanted no to no i it. totally forgot yeah good, good good save um yeah and so he ends up basically um trying to infiltrate the cult which he does yeah almost and then he gets sussed out because as an adventurer how do you get how do you get in there like you can't fight your way through no thousands just, yeah. and thousands of these guys yeah. even though conan's great so Conan, the great disguise guy, he may not be a thief. Boy, is he great disguise. And so what he's going to do, he's going to get a rope. So he finds a, finds a priest guy. And, does and he, he, has like, to, he has to be says, smart, right? Yeah, yeah. he's like, come, they're all into orgies and stuff, it looks like. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I think he tries to, like, entice him. He's like, come, is there somewhere more private where we I'm can... I'm shy. Yeah, yeah, where we can hang out and like... So there's that, obviously, that like, homosexual overtone that yeah, they did there. Yeah, yeah but but it's like, it's like a D&D campaign where it's like, well, I'm gonna do a charisma thing. I'm gonna try and seduce him. Mm-hmm. Like, totally. Like, and, and he, <coughs> he nails it. The priest just totally buys it and goes off alone yeah. with him. You should be proud of your body. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> Boom! Yeah. Gets exactly. knocked out. Um, and so we know, it's a little trivia thing here, too. When he knocks out the priest... Arnold Schwarzenegger gives this forearm, like he punches him in the gut and gives like a forearm smash to the back of the priest, and holy shit, does he hit him hard! It's <laughs> it's like we're like, uh, it's movies, right? Angles and stuff. Uh, the funny thing is, is Valeria and also Conan, the actors, obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger and the woman who played Valeria, they didn't have any suitable body doubles, so they did all their own stuff. Right, right. There's no yeah. one that was like a six foot blonde, and obviously Arnold. She so. was great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she was so good. Um. So when he gets found out and they take him to Tulsa Doom, right? Yeah. It's like, I, I love it. So they, he's sitting in there and Tulsa Doom comes in. And, and how they catch him he is had, because he he's a dummy. With the, the, <laughs> he used the special symbol from yeah. the snake thing. And again, like I was saying at the beginning, that maybe they're not all exactly symbols are all the same right, right. so that, and that they and they knew that it had been stolen one, yeah that, that one that. that got past a bunch of the guys and the one guy's like no i'm gonna keep this he's yeah. like we've been looking for this yeah it's funny because you look at that guard and that guard keeps going hmm this is weird oh this is my promotion maybe yeah. maybe i should show someone this right like there was that like yeah. thing going on um so that's where conan meets Thalsa doom for the first time the second, second, second time, time, yeah, and says, since you know, his mother, since yeah, he his mom. you killed my mother, you killed my father. He does the whole thing, right? And then that's when Thalsa Doom tells him the riddle of steel. But in a way, he is his father. Well, yeah, yeah, he tries to manipulate again, having a Star Wars reference. Yes, um, who would do that? But then when when Thalsa Doom looks up and asks the girl to jump off the cliff, and he goes, "That, that is power." power. Yeah, right. That is power. You know, so he, he basically says like the riddle flesh. of steel is like that was that was that's last year's flesh. news man yeah. like i've i've figured that out this yeah. is now as a as that. a youth he was seeking the secret of steel so yeah. that's when he's collecting yeah. father's sword and now he ever says it but but it's not just, just, just the flesh that's the power it's right. the spirit and, right. and then what does he say the false doom basically says what you know what is steel you know it's it's the hand yeah. that wields yeah. it so gr- great line 
So how does he take Conan's power and his ability to wield steel? Oh, he, uh, the hand that wields it. Yes. So he says, uh, let him let contemplate him, let this him... on the tree of woe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he can contemplate the brighter and side of life. And he crucifies him. So, so this is like, there's a couple, of, I didn't really notice it before, but he actually gets crucified. Yeah, this wasn't like Jesus style where it's like in your feet and your hands. This was like, no, that's, the actual, no, that's the actual style. That's actually oh, really? what it is. Yeah, this is a misnomer for Christianity. Oh, okay. It actually is here, right? Yeah. So here and then through the shins. And we're like, like, like railroad oh. spikes. So he's on the tree of woe. He passes out. He's in the sun. He wakes up with the vulture uh, eating his flesh. Ends up biting the vulture and killing it. Uh, fantastic. Awesome scene. Again, another one of those comic scenes. Yeah, we're we'll like, hold back on the I, comics. I guess it, well, in the comics, though, like the, the difference is in this one, he just bites the vulture and spits it out. But fantastic. I mean, it's a great, it's a great like picture, like a snapshot kind of. Yeah, thing, but, but you'd there. reference that in the comic, he actually. Feeds There's different, different things in the comic. The yeah, vulture just to sustain himself. <laughs> Um, so he's almost dead on the tree of woe. And yeah. then Valeria and Subutai is nearly dead, nearly dead. And if, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Right. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good movie. They rescue him and they bring him back to the shaman. Yeah. To make him. And they're like, can you say, can you help him? Right. And then he writes then, all the rooms. Then they get the ready stage. for that wedding thing where they do all that brown. Oh, yeah. Wait, no, that's the, something the, the henna tattoo. The henna, yeah. yeah. yeah so they, they like, write they it. They rune him. They draw all up on his face and his arms and everything. So for the D&D geeks out there. And if that means there, anything, I don't know if there's any hidden things with all that stuff there. If you guys know something, let us know. Maybe there's something. Well, it's the the symbolism. Well, but there brilliant. may be something cool hidden in there, too. Yeah, that's what I'm true. saying. So this there is why. There may be a nice Easter egg there. That but I this is why I think that Mako may be like a necromancer, possibly. Right. Right because of his ability to bring back the dead or nearly dead, yeah. right? So there's, it's not definitive. Yeah. We've decided that. Right. Yeah. Um, another great scene. So Jason actually told me that I n haven't heard this before. So when they resurrect him and the spirits come and they're trying to pull him up, what was it called? What was that? The, the oh the, the camera style yeah, yeah. The style. remember the ghosts and stuff oh, like, oh the ro rotoscope or rotoscope the rotoscope. one that they did the Lord of the Rings the Hobbit movie with where they had all that they they take a film and they draw stuff over the special effects yeah of the, special yeah, effects yeah. of the ghost things that were there it looked the, it looked the same to me I don't know yeah. if it's the same but, but it to my neat. uneducated eye it looked like the same thing it was a cool special effect yeah 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 it was it was very cool so um, Conan nearly dead. They end up holding him down. The spirits, tie him down. Yeah. Tie him down. The spirits don't take him. But then uh, Valeria is the only a, there's, one. But there's always a price. To go and jump on there and hold him down and make sure the spirits don't take him away. Yes. Uh, and then the next day, right? She's willing to pay the price. So a little foreshadowing there. Yeah, she, she says any, she, I'll pay she, any she kind price. Kind of bargains with the spirits yeah. and Crom and says I'll pay the price. <clears throat> yeah. Not Crom. Crom doesn't care. Yeah, the spirits, I guess. Doesn't care about your gods. Yeah. Right. Which we're getting to that in a okay, second. Sorry. So they end up, they save him. He wakes up the next day. And then we have a second training montage of Conan getting better. He's got wraps on him. Yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, so so we're talking, we're like, how long is he like an invalid for? You know, it's it, this. that's going to take a long time. Like, yeah. So there's this scene where he's standing there, the wind's going, he's holding a sword, and he's doing this, right? And I'm like, like, oh, yeah, I just got to. That's not three gotta, days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? That's magical healing. It's, right, I guess so. Uh, uh, yeah, right? Okay, all, right, all right, all right. So that's when he starts wielding, and he's doing the, the sword thing, that very famous, like, wielding the sword thing. Yeah, swinging it behind his back. Which, yeah, yeah. I might add, has turned into an internet meme where they've replaced Conan's sword with lightsabers and oh, glow sticks. There's, there's amazing, you can see all Have kinds of them? stuff. I haven't yeah. seen it. No, no, no. Let's check it so out. So good. Yeah. yeah. Um, fantastic. So they're getting ready to, they're now going to go back and they want to get the daughter for the king, right? Yeah. yeah. And failed, failed the first time by himself. He was like, okay, I just tried to just wing it and sneak yeah. in there. So you don't split up the party. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a D&D &D group or if you're in an 80s horror slasher flick. <laughs> don't split up. <laughs> what do they do? They split up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Valeria is very, so they're sitting around the fire. And again, a great scene where Subutai and Valeria are talking. It's like, we're just going to go get the daughter, right? Ready? Conan, we're going to get the daughter. And he, all he does is he's sharpening his, his sword. And with a, just a stone. With a yeah. rock. With yeah. a rock. <laughs> not, not like a special thing. <laughs> just a big rock. And then they're like, Conan? And he's like, 
right? So he doesn't care because you know what he's going to do. He wants revenge. he wants revenge. So they end up going, and they go to Thulsa Doom's temple, and they go to attack it. So, but they don't just do a head-on frontal assault. No, what do they do? The camel up. They paint themselves. You're going to find another way into the Lonely Mountain. White and black uh, camouflage, which actually is really cool because when I first thought, I was like, what is that? But then in certain scenes when you see him, it's actually like a pretty effective camel. like candle lit <laughs> cave camouflage style. It was yeah. very well done. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger does it in Commando too. Remember, oh, he, he does the line paint. Oh, yeah, 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 very yeah. cool. So, um, but in the cave there, what did you notice for the first time? Oh, that's a really good point. So, they end up looking in it. That's like the the orgy cave. That's what you're talking about. But before that, before, before the orgy they, cave, yeah, even yeah, even, the even when they're even just when they're entering the mountain. So when they enter the mountain, they go into the. I guess it's the food stores. That's that's how we could describe it. Yeah. And I had never noticed this before. But when Conan enters there, I thought they were slabs of beef hanging. But when yeah. we actually looked, they're slabs. They're hum. They're they're humans. All flayed apart. That have been flayed apart. And they're hanging on these these hooks, and I'm like, holy shit! Like I never saw that before. Yeah, on a hook. And obviously they had that big soup thing where they come and the hands in there, like the big soiling soil green, green, <laughs> green. Yeah, the soiling soil green. green stew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're people. Yeah, yeah. And there's like and you people like watching are awesome enough to get loving. all of those references. Yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Um, a lot of geek, a lot of geek stuff going on here. Yeah. So uh, that's what we do. <laughs> I kind of want to fast forward. So they he, they end up going in and the great battle scene with with Thorgrim uh, and uh, Rexor and the, you know it hits the he hits the pillar and then the pillar thing falls onto Rexor I and mean, it's it's awesome. But there's that great scene where Thorgrim hits the pillar and then all of a sudden like the pillar falls over and you just see Thorgrim look and he's like, "Holy shit, what did I just do?" <laughs> yeah. Roll the twenties when he fucking yeah. did. So I would argue that his hammer is like a plus five, like a magical warhammer. Like, yeah. like the thing is massive. And like, I don't know how you can wield that. Yeah. Um, and so they're going in to get Thalsa Doom, which by the way, was not going to be played by uh, James Earl Jones. Initially, yeah. oh. it was going to be played by Sean Connery. What? Yeah. That would have been nuts. Yeah. So there's orgy things huh. going on. And then so was, Thal- uh, James Earl Jones going to be Zardoz then? Zardoz? I don't know who that is. <laughs> so, yeah, I think he just out-geeked us there. So, okay, you gotta, I, what is that from? Now you gotta get asked. <laughs> just anyway. Okay. Dude, so, I'll show you later. So James Earl Jones, uh, obviously he's sitting there and the orgy and all that stuff going on. And he turns into the snake and then he disappears. So he runs away. He was right? bitch. With that great hard. time lapse. Oh yeah, they, they the really snake. blew the special effects <laughs> on that. One. Yeah, we said that all the special effects was done on James Earl Jones turning into the snake. Yeah. Um, and so they escape and they don't get him. No, but they away. do escape with the princess. Yes, and they go back. Mission accomplished. What could go wrong? Well, Arnold's not done yet. Arnold is not done. No, nope. Arnold wants revenge. revenge. Um, so. The problem is, is when they're escaping, Thulsa Doom ends up getting his bow and arrow and takes a snake. And it's funny because he takes a snake and, it's, and then it goes like this and it goes all straight, ends up shooting it, hits Valeria in the side, poison snake. They keep riding. Uh, she, and that, that's just plain awesome. Like he is he's got cool. the, like the sticks to snakes. Yeah, okay, Christian thing, whatever. But this is a much better use of the snake. And for a snake cult, as a theme fantasy builder yeah. of things, to have a snake yep. cult use a snake arrow, not an arrow shaped like a snake with little snake markers, but a fucking snake as an arrow. Yep. Why did it have to be a fucking snake? Because it's a snake cult. That's why it had to be a fucking snake. <laughs> cult. This guy. And it's so good because he could have used, he could have like, he has the snakes. He's like, and also, I want to know who like the zoologist was on this set because there was snakes and can't, there was a lot of animals. There was. On yeah. these sets. Like, yeah, the and, handler. Oh, that. and when they go into this orgy dome, there's like a, a leopard or yeah, a cheetah leopard. or something yeah. like it's a leopard yeah we're like there some do all these the animals are getting money like there's creating yeah. kind of job creation program for animals all around let's spread that it's like they had like the tiger king roll up and he's like i got all this stuff let's use all of it right like yeah, there was oh, tiger there was king a lot of exotic that. animals for sure <laughs> um so she valeria gets hit in the side obviously um and the scene the, the scenes that they used were really good. So the director, um, he wanted John Mullis, he wanted to actually create these sets, but they only had a limited budget. 
because he didn't want to use uh, special effects and backdrops and stuff like that. So at, when you actually look at the sets, they're actually pretty good yeah. mm -hmm. because yeah. they're, they're real. Yeah. But Valeria gets shot and then she ends up dying in Conan's arms and saying that it was, you know, don't sweat it. I made this deal kind of thing. Yeah. Right? And now you've got Arnold who's pissed. He's double pissed. He's double, Conan yeah. is double like, pissed. As if he didn't need enough revenge. <laughs> What's his character's motivation? Yeah. Uh, revenge. So, you know, they set up the camp. Uh, it's like that old, it's like that old, like, warrior mound, I guess. And they're putting in all the spikes and stuff like that. And they're getting ready. So, Subutai him, uh, ready to rock and roll. Uh, and, and the warlock. And the warlock Mako comes out. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, oh, how do I look? Right? And gets yeah, he's on so old not armor. a fighter, yeah. And so, again, this is one of those anti d things where they're getting people wearing actual armor. And this is one of the misunderstandings about Conan. You'll get the thing where the, he's, like, in the loincloth or the fur loincloth. But he actually does wear armor in different different things barbarians and i know the cuts built on the barbarian class but not wearing armor but conan wears armor when appropriate and these other guys are wearing armor yeah. when appropriate there's yeah. times to do it times not to do it great great setup for the battle there yeah yeah so they're all strategically ready and they use the king's daughter as bait to lure them that's why they're setting them up there they chain her up to the big the big burial mound mm -hmm. like uh statue there so she's all chained up and they they're kind of clash of titans exactly bondage yeah. there yeah yeah it was it was good so uh obviously the battle comes to them and conan has that but what really the, mattered though well this is the thing conan conan like, has that prayer two. Right, so he's sitting there, and I think that prayer is really good. He basically is, Krom, I've never prayed to you before, right? I have no tongue for it, he says. And uh, what, what is known is that it was two that stood against many, Yeah. right? Yeah. Not three, interestingly. But yes, two. it's two. And then, so this is the thing, and it's like, just, you know, I've never prayed for you, so grant me one thing. Grant me revenge, that's what he says. Yeah. And then, this is the topper to that line, is like, and essentially, if you, you know, do not grant me my wish, then to hell with you. Yeah, with yeah. You. But this like, goes back to an earlier right. thing that you skipped <laughs> over. But when they were talking about the about the, uh, was it, was it him and Subutai were talking about their gods? When they oh were, yes, what does your god do? The, well, my god. Er, yeah. Earlier when they met, earlier in the in the movie when they when they met and they're sitting there at the campfire kind of thing, just hanging out at night. Mm -hmm. And I could so tell me about your gods and about you know their gods and. <clears throat> and yeah oh so yeah the four winds the he's four like, winds my, my god is the four winds and, and then and he's like well, Krom Krom laughs at your god yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he's and then my laugh and then my god mm -hmm. laughs at you it's like no my, no, my, my god, god is above, above your, your, above above your everything and it's, it's yeah. got this great kind of thing and this is this is something that's been lost with the christian takeover yeah where people can't appreciate other religions they can still yeah, thing, but. and the funny thing is Robert E. Howard, so what he ended up doing is, uh, despite the damsel in distress thing they have going on, he actually has very strong female roles. Right? Totally. Mm -hmm. He really wanted to show the the female, like the Valeria is a, is a super strong character, like super kick-ass. Yeah, and, and she sacrifices herself yeah. to save him on her own terms. Nobody made her do that. She didn't have to. She just decided to do that. And then, you know, spoiler, later... She shows up again and saves the day at the end. So. Yes, for you nitpickers, Valeria, Red Brotherhood, different, different yeah. Valeria. But um, and the role of Subutai, uh, essentially. So uh, on the Jackie Chan was actually trying to get that role. Oh really? Yeah, but the problem is his English wasn't good enough in 1981. The only other guy, you know, the only other guy that I would have. Pick to play that, play that role is one of our favorites on this channel. Oh, oh Al, Young. Al Young. Yeah. That Just was, saying, uh, you know, that's the only thing missing from his resume. Uh, if you're un, unfamiliar with Al Young, we have referenced Al Young so many times. God, I would love to get him on the podcast. Oh, man, Al, so Al Young is. If you're, if you're out there, yeah. <laughs> uh, we love, love you. The connection. He is the he is the henchman that is in all the films. He is in. He is in Big Trouble Little China. He is in Die Hard. He is in They Live. He's he is the uh, like the Fu Man. He's the every man. Yeah, and yeah. He, awesome martial artist. So so, so yeah. good. So that he would have been great for that. The ultimate stunt man that broke the mold and yes. sort of became a like a cult yeah. like icon. And I've been trying to track down the movie. Apparently, got made a couple of years ago called Henchmen. That is the Al Leung story. Yeah, I've not seen it. We we, we, will have we to got to that. find it. So. I think it's out there. I think it was released on DVD, but it would be remarkable to watch. Yeah, totally. 
Um, so that battle that happens at the end of the film, uh, oh. really good. Thorgrim, Rexor, you know, they're, they're all riding everyone. in on horses and they are sort of using the runes to hide and dash in and out. And they've got all these <coughs> spears set up. So they have to, the horses have to maneuver and slow yeah. down a bit. So then they can and all the different smash the guys and... off the horses or smash the horses. And yeah, it was, uh, they really like strategically plotted their revenge on this yeah. one. They like, they failed the first time, they failed the second time and they said so they got better each yeah. time. They're like, okay, we really need to well, get our shit together. This is the thing because Krom actually answered their call. Yes. Here, right. Yeah. Because battle is what he appreciated. And so they end up doing really, really well, Subutai and him. And then Mako comes in and helps. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, it, it, Barely, guy, but he, he, kill, he, he spears the guy. And he's he has like, it. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> and he has that turtle moment. Too. Yeah. yeah. He gets, he's got this weird, like, back armor this back i guess maybe a shield on his back or something but he's got like this sort of rounded yeah back plate and he falls down and he, he can't get up again and really so good and and the, the character subutai which we talked about uh, before he was actually based uh on a loosely based on a historical figure oh really yeah and the historical figure was um was uh was a subutai um back in the mongol empire apparently and he oh. was a close companion and primary military strategist of Genghis Khan. Isn't that in uh, like the 12th century? Marco so. Polo, that. Uh, oh, I might be in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think they mentioned Super Do they? Tie. There yeah, we go. Yeah. So that's what he was yeah. based on. Huh? Um, but one of the deaths, so when Thorgrim gets killed, oh, fantastic. So Thorgrim ends up using his hammer on a helmet. It does this, this mechanical apparatus with this huge spike comes in and just embeds him in the chest. Yeah, total and, movie trap moment. And if you look at it, they did like, even the, the stuff coming out of his back, you know, they got like pieces of flesh hanging off. It was off good. It. it was a good death. Yeah. And then Conan's just looking at him and watching him die. He and just, he just and stands I, right in front of him and he's like, oh, yeah, totally. And I'm yeah. thinking to myself, you know, if you really want revenge on someone, that's what you would do. You, you would just do, watch you would them die. And yeah. you would enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like right. one of those things where you're just like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> this is Regan. This is Regan thing. You Regan. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you sit there and enjoy it for a second. <clears throat> yeah. And do it, do it like that. So I think that is probably one of the top 10 revenge deaths that I can think of in like deep culture. That's a good totally. one. Totally. That yeah. is a really good one. Yeah. It's the ultimate like, fuck you, I got you. Um, but you can see he was so into it. He's watching him die and he doesn't realize that Rexor is just coming in. He's, and then all of a sudden it was just like, Whoa. Right, and the so they caught have, off guard. Right, bit. they have that mm -hmm. that fight scene. Roll for initiative. Yeah, yeah. So here it's all coming to an end, and Conan has the Atlantean sword. Rexor is wielding his father's sword. Yep. Right. Which again, because of Riddle of Steel, all those years. Imagine all the raids. Conan was a little boy. Now he's a grown man. Imagine all the different raids they went on. All the steel they could have taken. That was yep. still the best sword. Totally. That the high priest could find in all that time for the riddle of steel and it was sort of this moment of like he his father had taught him about this and it was his legacy was supposed to be this sword but then it's being used against him and it's the same just sword like it was used against his mother. his mother right so there's like you can tell he's just it, it kind of it's a very like rattling moment for him but then he ends up uh, but that brings all the threads of revenge together. totally he ends mm -hmm. up dueling him scene. and chopping the sword in half with uh with the atlantean sword uh, really catching um, Rexor completely off guard. It was just like, <laughs> it was like, oh shit. <laughs> but yet, Rexor's a big badass, fucking high level fucking opponent. Yeah. So he would have beat Conan if he didn't have divine intervention. Yeah. But yeah. Then you go for divine intervention. How do you do it? Snap the sword. Yeah. Well, he but breaks, no, no, breaks the sword. Yeah, no, yeah, but, then, but he gets blinded by by Valeria. She yeah. blocks. She blocks that sword strike. Yeah. And then he gets blinded, and then and then that look is like, do you want to live forever? And so it's a great scene, yeah, yeah. totally, and like such a great intervention <laughs> from her too. Like. Yeah. But we had mentioned, we had said that Rexor's death was like really good because it took like three or four like really large strikes to actually bring the big man down. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a good way to die. It wasn't like a stab, and he died. It's like, no, you got to hit me again, hit me again. Yeah. And uh, it was good. I end up killing him. Um, and then, of course, Thulsa Doom ends Great up on the ridge, and he gets another snake arrow. And you're like, shit, this is what he's good at. Yeah. Launches does. the arrow right towards the princess who's, who's you know, strung up. And she wants it. She, yeah. 
like she's so far into this cult that she's like yeah sacrifice me this is my death no kind of no thing. i would disagree i think she was there i think because she, oh no she said help she, me she said help me, me right. and then he's gonna he was gonna kill her and that was the way that she you broke her thing you don't uh, think that was what, what uh, no, no yeah i no. think i think he's right actually yeah because no. She was asking for help, and she seemed she, really concerned when yeah. he was going to kill No, but he was, she was concerned that he was going to run away <laughs> and leave her with them, oh, and she maybe. wanted to be saved from them and him shooting the arrow. No, I don't well, think We're going to so. have to rewatch yeah, that. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, so she it's also doomed, shoots the arrow, of course, and then Subutai, We all know what that arrow does. Subutai jumps in, puts the shield in front, saves her. Fantastic. Yeah. However, we still have not Shields, had, not just for maidens anymore. Yes, yeah. but we haven't had revenge yet. No, because you know why? Why? What is revenge? It's a dish best served cold. And you know what? It's very cold. In space. <laughs> Wrath of Khan, reference. You knew you were waiting for it. Uh, <laughs> 1982, another great year for movies. That's when the Wrath of Khan came out. Do you know the Klingon proverb that tells us revenge is a dish that is best served cold? It is very cold in Spain. Ricardo Montalban. So when Conan, when Conan makes his way, it's kind of weird. It's almost like there was an edit thing. It's like, okay, I've made my way to cults there. And it's like all of a sudden yeah. like he snuck in and now he's there. Yeah. Um, and he ends up facing Thalsa Doom. And Thalsa Doom's death is pretty good. Yeah, because he's also gathered in front of his entire, well, not his entire, but like a huge section of this cult and is like giving a speech and is like addressing them. And he's kind of concerned because things are sort of starting to fall apart a bit. Like he's been dealt a couple of blows and his cult's definitely been screwed with by these uh, four adventurers coming in. And, you know, and people are realizing that it is this just crazy cult. And but they don't realize until he actually gets the cult. No, 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 the, the cult, the cult doesn't, but I think other people are. And that's why he's rallying his followers mm. right because he's saying like in this world there's all this stuff he's he's kind of losing it because he realizes he's getting fucked up he just lost his two main high priest guys yeah. like he's like he's kind of freaking out a little bit and he, he had to run away like this is the first time he's sort of been routed so in this whole thing the funny thing is is the death of Thalsa doom is actually very reminiscent of how it started when he's when he's mesmerizing conan's mother mm -hmm. so when conan shows up He's using his eyes and using that like serpent mes mesmerizing mm -hmm. thing. And you can see Conan kind of like, kind of doing this. And it's like, I'm your father and all this stuff. And then th it's that moment of realization. All of a sudden, then Conan looks up and goes like this and then just chops his, you know, it slices him. He's like, you were wrong. It was steel, not flesh. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? yeah. So the riddle of steel was actually... Is it still flesh? I don't know. I guess so. Your maybe. flesh versus my steel. Who yeah. the fuck's gonna win, motherfucker? <laughs> Let's do this shit. So when he strikes him, the best thing that when he grabs his head and he goes hack, and then he, it's like it's like it, it didn't hack his head off, right? Nope. And then yeah. he it wasn't the, it wasn't the clean it wasn't chop clean. from the, the one thing there. And then he throws his head, and, and the sound it's clearly the sound like this, like, like a football. Yeah, like this <laughs> Wilson volleyball that they put a bunch of like makeup shit on. And it like bounces sort of down the stairs and is rolling and tumbling in front of his, all of his followers. And <laughs> then they all freak out and run away. And yeah, it was, uh, it was good. So after that, and then it basically ends up with Conan. And she has this, this image of Conan sitting on the throne. However, there is a Mandela effect that I have a problem with. Because when we watch the film, at the end of that film, there's a monologue with Mako. Oh, yeah. Right. But they didn't have it. Yeah, you guys swore it was there. I've, I've so never heard the of it. I have to look at different versions. Maybe it was just one. So the, the monologue I that I remember and then Jason remembers is Conan sitting there like this and basically Mako saying, and Conan sat with a troubled brow. And a kingdom uh, to rule, uh, but, you know, he there's this thing. And, and it makes sense because the movie starts that way, the movie should right. end that way. And right. then Mako actually is supposed to say in this this closing monologue that, and it goes, but that is another tale or adventure. Setting it up for the sequel. For, for King Conan. Right. And, and you've got Conan on the throne, just like you've got the giant on the throne with the sword. Yeah. You've got the old, the other king there. And Conan, we talked about the barbarians. There's the, he has to, when he takes over Aquilonia, then he sort of joins the civilizing forces against the Picts. Yeah. And... 
And this is the great thing. So there's people don't realize that there's a mythology built around Conan the Barbarian. And after the original film, when he's, you know, he's like 30, 32 years old and stuff like that. Fast forward. How old is he in the original film? Is that... Uh, I'm just guessing, okay. but but fast forward 50 years when he's King Conan, he's oh, sitting on the throne, and which, Jason, Jason which and I- Which this is my constant pet peeve. Yeah, like Arnold. Okay, Arnold, <laughs> if you're watching this dude, you were governor, you retired from being governor. Yep. You started out with Conan. You have to do this. Well, you, you still have a chance. Do this. You need to do King Conan, Crown of Iron, whatever they're going to call it. There's been so many- making it not making it do this you have been the ruler now you need to come back you need to play the ruler they get you started with movies tie those things up please you can you can use your horses that are in your house in oh the yeah movie. the little like, yeah, yeah. yeah imagine how awesome it would be like he is still yeah so awesome do this yeah, yeah. so it so Arnold Schwarzenegger is at the perfect age right now to do King Conan. Totally. Like this is it. Like yeah. he has done everything. He's done the Terminator, that franchise. The only thing he needs to tie up is to do King Conan. And it would be spectacular if they did it right. And totally. Arnold, if you don't do it, you know that after you're dead, someone's going to do it with CGI. So you might want to have some control <laughs> over that do it yourself. You see how they butchered other people's things? Do it yourself. Have that control. That is, that is true. So we hope that they do King Conan. Um, there's so much trivia uh, for Conan. It's crazy. I'm just going through some of the trivia stuff here. And it's, I've, I've it's got like, a really good one. So, so Conan and the Barbarian and the, the comics spun off a really crazy comic when I was doing my research that I saw yeah. called uh, Barack the Barbarian. Have you guys heard about this? No. So it was sort of a satirical... Uh, uh, comic where uh, Barack Obama is this super jacked Conan style barbarian and the one issue that I was looking at was uh, Barack the Barbarian versus Sarah the Red instead of Sonia the Red it was Red Sarah, Sarah Red Sarah yeah Red Sarah yeah um, the for Sarah Palin and they just poke fun at how he had to battle all of these different uh, people in politics and then they gave them swords and axes and made them fight in this crazy fantasy world. So just a really cool, check it out if you're into weird comics, uh, Barack the Barbarian it was fantastic. Yeah, there's just so many other, other things. Like Robert E. Howard did tons of other stuff besides Conan. People just know him for Conan. Yeah. He did tons of other stuff. When you said the, the Barack thing, I didn't know about that, but one yeah. of his other characters is Bran Morn. Is another one of his characters he has and he does other stuff too he has another thing of sailor steve Koskin. this is like this boxing sailor that's got like a pet dog that goes around the south seas fighting what? in boxing matches Amazing. and stuff it's like he does some it's pulp cool. fiction stuff it's like super cool uh, he does the, tons of different things there is also called the conqueror right. yes. called, yep. yeah. which is from the earlier age but this and, is directly tied into that mythology and within like, the same world because like the, the hyborian like, age is an earlier age of our world before I think, and then before before the Hyborian Age was mm. the Atlantean Age. So there's different things, and in the Marvel Universe, this actually ties ties in there too. And there's wow. some great what ifs in the Marvel Universe, by the way. Since we've done other Marvel mo movies, um, there's a there's a really good one where is Wolverine and and Conan switch places, where Wolverine goes to Earth and or or Conan goes to Earth and Wolverine stays in the Hyborian Age. Imagine so uh, Conan <laughs> hanging out with Professor X. That'd be great. Well, actually, he goes <laughs> he goes to the moon and and. Uh, uh, kill it's, kill it's, someone it's like and, an and Wolverine right? hooks up with Red Sonya, <laughs> so, so it's kind of cool. But there's another one where Thor comes to where Th Thor comes to Hyboria. Yeah. Oh, you read that one? No. Okay, I'm not going to spoil okay. it. Is, is Conan there while Thor's there? Well, okay. Well, that's, that's so it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's like a team up of Conan and Thor. What? Okay. And so I don't believe I can't I can't believe you don't know about. No, and the, and the Pulp Fiction Robert E. Howard's like read those things. He is a very powerful writer. The Conan <laughs> became famous for a reason. It's there, it's just amazing to read his original original stories, and then there's a bunch of pastiches, as they call them, of other writers who have wrote Conan over the years. In fact, one of them you guys may know, Robert Jordan, who people know now as a famous fantasy author. He made his bones by writing Conan fan fiction. Oh, just pastiche for professional fan fiction. It's called pastiche. So he did those kinds of things. Cool. That's how he got got going. There's so many just so many great things that awesome. that came of this and so the conan movies conan movie is great the second one less great but it still has some really good moments it in it too yeah um we probably won't get a whole episode on that one but 
Um, this does tie back to our sword and sorcery thing, but this one was so good it deserved an episode of its it own. It did. Conan, amazing. We had a fun time uh, rehashing it. Um, I'm pretty sure that you've all seen it too, but we just like talking about it because it's fun. Yeah. That's kind of what the Torvus podcast is about. Just uh, three, three guys sitting around shooting the shit, having some drinks uh, in Valhalla here yeah. and uh, just talking about geeky stuff. And um, Some better at talking, some better at drinking. Yeah. Uh, so we'll obviously continue on doing things uh, for the Torvus podcast. And until next time, whatever we tackle, keep on keeping, keeping on. on.